Hello, boys and girls, and everything between and beyond. My name is V, and welcome to... Contrition... Contrition... Which is... Eerily quiet. But... We have been through this kind of... Atmosphere before, haven't we? So let's get into it and see what this game has to offer. I absolutely know what they what this is. When the bell tower tolls, twelve on Halloween night, a wind blows through the eaves of the cathedral you call home. Your cassock sways around your ankles as you sweep the halls, upstairs to the chore loft and down the soaring nave. You pass the chapels, the flickering candles on the votive stand, the patches of rainbow moonlight that fall from the stained glass window. You set the broom down by the celluloid lamp in the sacrist sacristy and the radio beside it crackles out a midnight show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the plays of Ophirium Theater brings you the gripping Halloween story of terror, tragedy, and intrigue. Leave everything you know and trust from the modern world behind. Take a step back with us into the midst of Renaissance Germany. Let us partake now the folly of the ill-fated Dr. Faust. And remember that one misjudged wish could be your undoing. The episode is brought to you by Mr. Ayo de Cologne for Men. Bold, but well-mannered. For men who need no convincing. With notes of sage and frank that shows up fashionably late from those boardrooms to ballrooms when it matters make it mysterio your hand lingers on a broomstick as you listen to the broadcast and your mind drifts off in the sea of noises then you remember that you're not done you pick the broom up Prop it to the wall and cross the small square room. And when you open the cabinet, you see the altar crucifix is gone. You screw your face up and stare at the empty spot. That doesn't make sense. It should be right there. But a foot long with sharp solid gold points. The gold saucer sits in the corner. Candlesticks stands in the back. It must not have been stolen. Did an altar boy misplace it? They know, they know where it goes. You sighed. Never mind. You cannot ask the other priest in the morning. You got more chores before you turn in for the night. Let's polish the sacred objects. You squint at the other treasures and spot fingerprints on their rims. That won't do. They should, uh, they should shine brighter. Uh, than the promise of heaven itself. You open a bottle of uh, 
of the oath and a bottom drawer and take a bottle of polish out, tap some onto the cloth besides it, and and buff the first of the candlesticks. We now return to the special Halloween presentation of the Orpheum Hour. The radio says, brought to you by Mysterio. When it matters, make it Mysterio. You, your eyes glaze over and gaze into your reflection in the gold. Your thumb rubs the stick the street cloth in the same circle on the same spot. Your eyelids drops as the voice of the radio fades to a blur. When it matters, make it the stereo. Until you blink yourself awake. You shake your thoughts off. Scroll and throw yourself back into your work. You pulse the a uh, chalice, the altar bell, the communion cups, the incense boat. You rub all of the nooks and crannies of the sense sensor and it and its lid until they glam like starlight. <laughs> then you hear a thud that shudders through the walls. You freeze, you glaze left then right, your nerves stick in your throat, an echo that uh, that loud must have come from the cathedral's huge main door. You turn the radio off and peer through the open sacristy doorway, who else could be here at this hour? Only one way to find out. You steal through the hallway with hunched shoulders and wide eyes. Maybe the street kids snuck in for another Halloween prank. Ghostly notes on the organ, chalk pentagram on the floor, or maybe the janitor came back and shut the door too hard. An inchling dread follows you as you flip switches and peek through doorways creeps into your skin. The more rooms you check, the less you feel alone. When you reach the glowing sweeping sanctuary, sure enough, you find one of the doors open and a draft wh whipping through the anothex. You hurry under the main arch, press a wage against the planks, Heave it shut and let your breath out. And peace fall over the place again. But then, when you pass the old carved frame that looms near the transept, you notice the red drape is drawn. Someone in the confessional. Your footstep clicks on the flagstone floor as you pass down the aisle and you spy two black shoes tucked under the curtain's hem. A woman's shoes? A man's shoes? Dusty? Polished? You can tell. The statue's lifeless marble's eyes stare at you as you go. You hesitate before you ease the other drape open, step in, shut it behind you, and plunge yourself into the dark. You slide the lattice screen open and wait for the person to begin, but they say nothing. Prompt them. You clear your throat to get the person's attention. But they don't respond. So you scut to the edge of your seat and tilt your head towards the screen. Hello? St 
still nothing. A second pass. Two. You pat your legs. Scratch your cheek. Just as quiet. Cramped closeness becomes uncomfortable. You hear a man's voice pick up in the measured monotone. Is someone there? I am. You, s you scot closer to the screen. Can I help you? Uh. You wait the heavily. The silence returns. The conversation hangs in limbo. You prompt him one more time. Yes? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. Start wherever you feel I feel like it. Not wherever you feel like it. What if I don't know what I feel? We can talk talk through that. I'm pre pretty down and out. You might not be able to help me. You lace your fingers over your knee. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with you. Most of the people who, who, who come here just need someone to listen to them. Still, I uh, glance through the lattice to see who, who you're meeting with. But it's, not, but it's no use trying to make out the man's face. In light this slow, all you have to go on is shadow and a pair of shoes. And he stopped talking again. Why are you down and out? Why are you down and out? Why is anybody down and out? We live in a society that trains us to be miserable. You lean against the back of his seat. What do you mean by that? Suppress your natural urge. Feel guilty for everything. Is there something you feel guilty about right now? Me? No. I was talking about everyone else. You will raise your eyebrows. No? I did what I had to do. That couldn't mean anything. Then what brings you here this late at night? I keep late hours. The man answers as politely as before. I always been a night owl. I'm more productive when the sun goes down. My father used to hate it. Said there was no reason to be up at midnight unless you were doing something deviant. The sudden shift in topic leaves you unsure what to say. Uh huh. Of course, I've never understood what the point of fathers is except to ruin your self esteem and ability to trust people. I think it was a bad marketing for the church to name the point men fathers and accept anyone to confide in them. They should have called you something else. Squeeze your eyes a few times at the man's home-baked philosophy. Compelling, relatable. You also need to go to bed. Can I ask something? The man continues. Go ahead. Have you ever watched anything die? The hair on your back, the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Huh. Why have you? Try to nudge the conversation towards him again. Why have you? I asked you first. He doesn't seem annoyed, but he's not going to budge either. Well, yes. Yes, you say. Of course I do. All the time. Well, last rites. It's part of my job. 
it's surreal, isn't it? Like you're seeing someone that you're not supposed to see. I don't know. I like to think they found it com uh, comforting. Uh, as much as you find anything comforting in a situation like that. When they're in unmeasurable pain, you mean? Uh, uh, well, you stammer. Yes, but it's important that I give them the sense of inner peace. Huh? <laughs> the man sleeve uh, crickles. Like he's lift his shadow arm up. Hasn't been my experience. You frown. Experience? I never met anyone who didn't go out without a fight. The limbs jerk, the muscle fiber tense when you break through them. Heck, even after a person is legally brain dead, their arms fly up, try to grab at you. Your blood runs cold. They settle down eventually, though. Then you get to walk in away. It's the law of the jungle. Or what would you call it? The cane instinct? You sit stone still on the bench. The man pokes you again. Come on, you should know that. You scramble to compose yourself. Er, uh, what? You never have more power over anything on earth than when you're taking something out of it. The man rambles with the jarring tranquility of reading a grocery list. You think I have be been uh, El Benvolent God would smite us before we could go through with it. But if we have no right to do it, are we able to? Your eyes start up and down and find nothing but encroaching black. Your ribs tighten, your pulse bangs in your eardrums, your feet curls in your shoes. You well up with terror that, that a dim, unexplored part of your mind recognizes as the mark a concerned prey. Anyway, I thought about it too hard. I feel weird about it. Guess I just need someone to talk through with it. Your hand clench in your lap. My friend, you murmur to the screen. I hope you realize I'm not allowed to disclose anything you tell me here. Is there something you need to admit? I won't go to the police. I could be excommunicated. Don't see how that's re re relevant to me. It means you can trust me. Well, maybe I don't have anything to admit to you. Besides, you could call them anyway. I take my faith too seriously to lie to you. Ah, <sighs> I get it now. Your ba boss may not find out, but the manager upstairs would. That's a red mark on your record. Uh, you know, like... Uh, at least who takes the so Soviet stuff. I do. Don't do it. Cause you might get cough, caught. Caught means punished. And that little pre converged, pre conventional, don't you agree? Your eyes search back and forth the drape, the crosses on the screen. The drape, if you left a man, may not see you in the dim light, but he would hear you. If he hears you, it might provoke him. I don't know what. He's like when provoked. I have no idea who or what you're in here with. 
The man words hangs in the air as an idea occurs to you. You can keep him talking, play along, sure he stays cool, calm, engaged, till what? He loses interest in you. Are the police out looking for him? None of the staff will come and come in until dawn. Just you and him here in the dark. Maybe you can even walk him back from board whatever it is he wants to do. Well, the man probes again, don't you? Question is where's to start? Do you think of more? Do you think about that a lot, you ask? About what? Morality. I guess you could say that. So do I. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. The man's manners gives way to a bitter note in his voice. I got the impression it was your job to tell me right from wrong. Some priestess would tell you it is. I don't. I don't really believe that. Actually, I do. Fate can only get people so far. They have to figure out the rest. They have to figure out the rest out themselves. The man snorts. You crane your neck back. What? No, really. Even you? Even me? Pa you pass the smile on and hope it comes through in your tone. Don't let the Vatican's excess fool you. This job is harder than it looks. I could see that. Could you? It's after midnight and you're still here polishing all that stuff. You must be busy. Stomach drops. He's been watching you. Forced yourself to remain calm, planned, and reassuring. That's right. You looked like you were doing a pretty tough job, uh, th throw pretty full job of it, too. My mother used to say, place for everything and everything in its place. I think she couldn't control my thoughts, so she took it out on the housework. Do you feel like you need to control things? Why does he keep turning this back to you? Ah, uh, you fish for something diplomatic. Probably not in the same way you do. You don't know me. The, ma the man's voice sharp and he moves closer to you. You've only talking to me for a few minutes. Don't pretend you understand me. You became extremely aware of the fragility of this green. If he's motivated enough, he could break through it and strangle you. But you have to keep the conversation rolling. You're right. You soften your voice to coax him off his perch. I don't know you. But I like to understand you. Do you feel like you're different from other people? Everyone's different. That's true in some ways, but we're all the same on the inside. Actually, we're not. We're full of surprises when you open us up. The man drifts into another of his macabre soli soliloquies. Medical textbooks give you a rough idea of what to expect. But you never know what you're getting into until you're actually in it. Some people's heart are on the wrong side. Some people have an appendix. Some don't. Though we all bleed red. I haven't even seen blue yet. Science fiction lied about that one. I haven't seen blue yet. Alright. I mean, Alanged rejected. I don't have to feel it. I know everyone rejects me. 
You rest your elbow on your knees. Surely not everyone. It's alright. You regret it in the end. You take a deep breath. The man's breath sounds even too. So far, so good. Hmm. You cross your ankles. You have some heavy ideas waiting on you. It's not surprising that you're worried about things like violence and death. It is easier for you to put a fig leaf on it, isn't it? I dig a thumbnail into your cut clay. What do you mean? I mean like when church did to those statues years ago, cover the genitals up to prevent them from being human. What does that? You know humans are the only animal that can be castrated and still have a sex drive. At least that's what teachers told me once. She could have made it up. Shift your weight back and forth on the bench and fidget. What's your point? I keep wanting to reduce the things that tell I tell you to my thoughts. You're studiously avoiding that I might have an action, uh, that I might have actually done anything. I think it makes you able to justify this whole sh shindig. If I were truly a guilty person, you wouldn't want to rescue me. Then what do you do? I implore him. Am I wrong though? This is easier if you're honest to him. I think you're the one who's being less than honest here. I said I wouldn't lie to you. Then what do you call it when you don't tell people the whole truth? You bite the inside of your cheek. Why did you become a priest anyway? I let out a short, tight sigh. This meaning is about you, not me. If you'd like to discuss my private life, we can talk some other time. Then hands tone sours. It's rude to not answer questions you know. I meant, I know what you meant. Why is it alright to interrogate me, but not you? Starting to sense that pushing him won't l let lead anywhere good. He claps a hand in a prayer position and drags them down your nose. If answer him will avoid a fight, that's what I have to do. Well, started out as an altar boy. And I liked it. I kept going. Gave me a sense of belonging that I didn't get at home. You stick your uh, thumb in the sleeve of your uh, can sock and felt along the lining stream. When I was a teenager, I realized it was a way to do good with my life. I guess you could say I felt a calling. The Lord reached out to me. Whoa. You struggled to read the man's tone. Is he earnest? Sarcastic? What? They could rule you unfit for a trail if you said that in court. Did you see angels? Hear trumpets? It's not like that. It come, came from within. I wanted to help people. Even the one others fell are beyond saving. Have you ever actually looked evil in the face? I don't think evil has a face. I think we fight it within ourselves. Are you sure about that? 
your shoulder tense again. As opposite of what? Are you sure it wasn't really about having a sense of authority? How long have you been in here? You're losing track of time. I worked hard to get where I am. I'm not saying you didn't. I'm saying that it's a system with firm chain of command. Did you ever think about the army? Men who want to go places. They have plenty of the, uh, of the stuff. Stuff it takes to get there. You mother. I had flat feet. Oh, huh. Man pauses and seems to mull over what you said. I should have thought of that when they uh, called me up. But the same day you answered to uh, bishops. Private answers to cadets. It's all dominance of mission in the land of the soldier and priest. Stibble your fingers and set your teeth. Where is this? Where is he going with this? Look, the man muses. I never met a man in uniform who didn't uh, have a weird relationship with authority. Either they have to have their fingers on the trigger all the time, or they just want somebody else to make the decisions for them. Which are you? I don't understand the premise of your question. I don't f I think you do and don't want to admit it. A shield runs up your arms. See, the thing that everything in life is about sex, except sex. The man goes on. Sex is about power. Famous writer said that once. Oscar Wilde. You tell him. Do you like books? Ah, uh, made one my life works, didn't I? Yeah, I guess that's a stupid question. Anyway, do you ever think about that? About what? But how a lot of people mix up power and sex. No, I can't say so. You? Of all people? With the things you must hear in here? You scream in your narrow seat. I'm not allowed to. Break the seal of the confession, that's right. There's a whole laundry list of things you're not allowed to do. But it's all worth it if people look up to you and respect you, isn't it? You feel the vein throb under your collar like a tolling bell. Funny seeing that you're the one who took the vow of obedience throbbing grows stronger. Besides, it hasn't stopped you before, has it? You hate to take the bait, but you've come this far. You can't lose him. What? I mean, a life like this has to be a major uh, commitment. It's for your whole life, for a start. People have left before. You wouldn't do that, though. You take your faith too seriously. Remember when you said that? You screwed the corner. You screwed the corner of your lip. I said it because I do. So you would never give up all the the creature comforts of the world just to be the boss in the room. You bite down harder. No. Of course, others pre sleeps in luxur luxury, but you wouldn't have known that. Now, not that you're si signed it all away. The man grows more persistent without raising his voice. No gold watches, no sleeping in on the weekends, no more col cologne. What does that one ad say? 
when it matters, make it stereo. Your nose sting, your breath grows shallow, your mouth runs dry. How does he know? You dig your fingers into your wrist so hard, you gouge the skin. What do you want? The man's tone drips with snark. I'm sorry, am I making you uncomfortable? Ah. Uh, does it feel intimidate to be trapped in dark, in a dark, tiny box with a man who asks you to spill your guts and won't share anything with you? Do you feel vulnerable? I was not mocking you. You inhale so hard your nostrils flare. No. You should, the man's voice darkens. Because you've made a big mistake. Your head swims. How much have you accidentally relieved, revealed to him? Is, a ma is he a master manipulator? Has some dark force seen into your soul? Or is he just eccentric? And the weeds of your rumors have grown so tall and gnarling that you're drawing lines where there are none. Well, the man hounds you. Did it feel good? Shake your head feebly. No. Already know it was wrong, didn't you? You couldn't even enjoy yourself. It was for good cause, though, wasn't it? You blur out. I was trying to help. Just goes to show the road to hell is paved with good intention, isn't it? You stretch your tight legs out, but you feel bad, but your feet bash into the wood. Is the dark space getting smaller, or are you imagining it? You castrate your brain and, and button the dog's collar up and say you praise every night because you know what you're capable of. You're, f you're, you're as fallible as the people who take confessions with you and you can't stand it. You're supposed to be different. Beads of sweat form on your brow. You're going to get out of bed tomorrow and put that white robe on. And the show will sing and all the boys will light the whole place up. And the sheep will file in and take communion and cross themselves. And you can pat yourself on the back for another job well done. Sure, they feel self-righteous for having gone to church. But you're back on the straight and narrow, the ritual for you, not them. You gulp down long flues, you gulp down long folds of air, your lips smart, you taste blood. But you can't lead a flock anywhere with a guilty conscience, can you? How do you let people off the hook when you got sins to confess yourself? Then who can they trust? You try in vain to interrupt him. I didn't. You're the operator. The only direct line to God they have. The man's voice filled the whole confessional. What happens to the sheep when a shepherd fucks up? Your face burns, blood rises in your ears, pulls pounds in your chest. You huddle up, slump over, bury your face in your hands. Go on, the man speaks with that blessed kindness that rattles you to the core. 
Start wherever you feel like it. You can't run anymore. You remember a black clamshell handbag, a drawn curtain, a lunch door, a dress zipper, a sign, a silhouette hotel bedside lamp, a French heel stocking, a hand with blood red manicure on your throat, a bottle of Mysterio cologne on the bathroom countertop. She lived in my old parish, you began. The man leaves soon for you to go on. I met her when she she and her husband, husband had moved to town five years ago. The man still doesn't comment. She came to confess for one time. And we started talking and... You can finish. You wanted to help her. She was so lonely. You rushed to explain yourself. She wouldn't ever let her call her mother. She didn't have any friends. He was roping her off from the herd. I knew it. I saw the signs. But the Mons Monsino warned me it was my play wasn't my place to get involved. You plant your elbows on your knees, tuck your shin and Wing your hands. The day he shipped out, she came and told me what was going on. I think I was the first one who actually listened to her. The man cuts in, and then you did it. She made the first move. When the foxhole filled with when the foxhole filled with blood, it's really matter who filled the first shot anymore. Pressure building behind your eyes. You're not go going to cry. You're not going to cry. You won't. How long did it last? The man asked. You shrug. A few months. I don't know. We were always discreet. But then someone found out. The Monsignor. So you had to get rid of him. Your voice cracks but you swallow hard. And will yourself to go on. It wasn't like that. A profane job. But you had to save yourself. I wrote a letter to Archbishop, alright? man listens and waits. I had seen him playing with the bookkeeper's daughter a few times, you say. Yeah, she had his nose, his eyebrows. It wasn't proof, but it was enough. I looked up his past appointments and made a couple of phone calls, and I heard there was a nun who had uh, had gone to Ireland for six months. And... Did he do it? I thought I did. He did. I don't know. I never know. You're right. The only thing more powerful than guilt is doubt. You hold your temples. Temp templars. Menace, but caught doesn't always mean punished, does it? They transferred him across the country. As far as I know, he's still there. You smooth your hair back. A month later, I put in for a transfer too. It come out that I have wrote the letter. Sin is sin, until it's you. You don't answer. Disgust churns in your gut, your shoulders shake in the moment. 
The wooden box feels ready to cave in on you. you close your eyes, lower one hand, and bring the other to your mouth. And you clutch your face as a hot, silent tear rolls down your cheek. There, the man says, you stare quiet. That wasn't so bad, was it? A second, then a third tear falls. But you still don't say anything. I'd say that makes us even. The man sounds as pleasant as when and you first came in. Don't worry. Seal of the confession. I won't tell anyone. Who are you? Illusion, who are you? I'm whoever you want me to be. You're the devil, aren't you? Come on, that would be too easy. You could write this off as a bad dream and ignore everything I said. You sniffle, dab your nose with your knuckles, try to sit up straight. Humor me, the man adds. Why did you never forgive yourself? What? You're the one who can absolve people. Why didn't you do it to yourself? Because you blot out another tear on the cuff of your sleeve. If I let myself forget the pain, I might do it again. You blink a few times and steal yourself. It's going to kill you, you know it. This was just a dance, the lead up, but the man doesn't speak or move. Nothing happens, not a wave of guilt rolls over you, and you press your palms under your elbow and make an undignified noise. I'm sorry, you managed to get out between dry, pitiful sobs. I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't make it go away, though, does it? You screw your face up. No. It's okay. I'll forgive you. You can't do that. I don't play by your rules. He's telling the truth. He doesn't. That gives you one more idea. Listen. You pick yourself up and take a long breath. Whatever you were planning to do tonight, do it to me. I know you've killed people. You're not ready to die. Pull your lips into your teeth. You're right, I'm not. But if I spare an innocent, I have to face what I've done. The man pauses and then says, no. You frown and turn towards screen. No. Contradiction is the beginning. You've got a lot of good to do. You press your hand to the wooden panel underneath the screen, but you know when it's your time, the man tells you, this isn't it. The bench creaks as the man stands up, ducks his head and steps out. You kick, you scramble, you gope everywhere for the velvet of the drape. Soon as you find it, you fling it open, you leap out after him, you race down the aisles to the endless row of pews, you cry out, wait! The votives flicker, the moon shines on the st statue's crown, your voice echoes up the buttress, but no one responds. A draft blows past your ankles and whistles through the lattice screen of the confessional, still and silent, like no one was ever there. Wow. 
Okay. That... I got really sucked into this. Wow. I like this. Like... I'm not very religious myself, but I am very interested in th theology. So, yeah. Interesting story. Very interesting. Perfect for the season. <sighs> I'll do the items. Well, uh, well, there was some some words I struggled with that probably were because, as I said, I'm not religious, so I don't have much connection to like the church or like any religious buildings. So some things it was the first time I have seen like the names of them. I've seen. I've seen them before because, yeah, I've, I've been in churches and other religious buildings because I have, have friends and not really family members, but I've had people around me that are religious, so I kind of know what they were, I just didn't know the names of them. But yeah, this was an interesting little journey uh, and... Yeah, yeah, I got really sucked into the story. I like this. Maybe I should do more... Uh, like this minimal... text adventures things. Let's just see if there's more like this. But yeah. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to help me out, share this video and watch some other of my videos. And uh, have a good whatever it is where you are. And I will see you in the next stream or video. Bye bye.